Hi, my name is Ben Clay. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Cambridge, and welcome to this video, Hypokalemia Made Simple, The Cambridge Approach. In this video, we're going to be working through the background and clinical features of hypokalemia before moving on to how we assess and manage hypokalemia. It's a really important topic to know about, as low potassium levels can cause very serious complications, including cardiac arrhythmias and death if untreated. Before we discuss hypokalemia, it's important to know what's normal. A normal potassium level is anywhere between 3.5 millimoles per litre and 5 millimoles per litre, with hypokalemia being defined as anything under 3.5 millimoles per litre. We call it severe hypokalemia when we're anywhere in that range, around 2 millimoles per litre. Next, let's think about the clinical features. For mild and moderate hypokalemia, these patients are usually asymptomatic, and this abnormality is picked up incidentally on a blood test, but it's still very important to pick up and manage as if it deteriorates to severe hypokalemia, they can develop symptoms and complications. As I said, for severe hypokalemia, we can get symptoms, but again, they're often asymptomatic. But when they do have symptoms, those are usually palpitations, which are usually secondary to cardiac arrhythmias, myalgia, which is muscle pain, muscle weakness, and also muscle cramps. There are two main mechanisms which can cause hypokalemia. The first of which is insufficient potassium intake, and the second is excessive excretion of potassium. Taking the first of these, it's very uncommon to have an insufficient potassium intake such that you get genuine hypokalemia. It only really occurs in very strict diets, such as those people with eating disorders, including anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa, and also those on a strict ketogenic diet. The much more common cause is excessive potassium excretion, and the first way that this can happen is through loss of potassium from the gut or through the skin. And these causes can be broken down into diarrhea, where we lose a lot of potassium in the watery diarrhea, through the skin, sweating, which contains potassium, and also crush and burn injuries, where we lose potassium from the cells and then it leaves from the surface of the skin. The other way that we can lose potassium is through the urine. And the main ways that this happens is with diuretics, but importantly, these are the non-potassium sparing diuretics. So diuretics which, which work after the distal tubule, including spironolactone, for example, do not cause hypokalemia and in fact can cause hyperkalemia. But all diuretics which work more proximally in the tubule, including loop diuretics such as furosemide or Lasix, and also thiazide diuretics can both cause hypokalemia. The second cause of urinary loss of potassium is hyperaldosteronism. Aldosterone is a hormone produced by the adrenal glands which works on the kidney and acts to retain sodium and excrete potassium. So in cases where we've got excessive aldosterone, we get an excessive excretion of potassium by the kidney. Causes of hyperaldosteronism, the main one to think about is Conn syndrome. Then the third cause of excessive loss of potassium in the kidney is metabolic alkalosis. So when the blood is alkaline, that is the pH of the blood is high, the kidney tries to hold on to hydrogen ions, which are that pure acid molecule. And the way it holds on to hydrogen ions is by exchanging them for potassium. So hydrogen comes in and potassium goes out into the urine. After we've discussed the causes of hypokalemia, let's think about what we actually see in these patients. So obviously, we see the low potassium level on the blood test, but the things that we really worry about with hypokalemia are cardiac complications because it can precipitate arrhythmias. And so there are some key changes to look out for on the ECG when we're thinking about hypokalemia. The first thing that we see in more mild hypokalemia is flattening of the T-waves. The T-waves are the positive deflection which occurs after the large QRS complex and which represents ventricular repolarization. Normally it's a positive deflection, that is the bump goes upwards, but in hypokalemia that bump becomes flattened. Then the second thing we see is ST depression. The ST segment connects the end of the QRS complex, which is the large spike, to the start of the T-wave. Normally that's a flat line. But in hypokalemia, that line can become depressed below baseline. The third change is a worsening of the first change, where instead of T-wave flattening, we get T-wave inversion, which we can see in this diagram, like a finger is pushing the T-wave downwards underneath the baseline level. Then in very severe hypokalemia, we can get U-waves, which are an additional wave not normally seen on an ECG. And this is a positive deflection, which occurs after the T-wave, as we can see in this diagram. Now, now that we've identified this hypokalemia and we know what to look out for on the ECG, what do we do about it? 
First and foremost, we want to treat any underlying cause. So if, for example, the patient has diarrhea due to gastroenteritis, we want to think about can we reverse that? If they have some Kohn's syndrome, which is causing hyperaldosteronism, can we get that under control? Secondly, once we've addressed that, we want to think about supplementing the patient with potassium. This should always be the second line option, as there is always a risk of causing hyperkalemia from giving too much potassium too quickly. But if we do give potassium, we want to give the minimum amount via the safest route possible. So we want to give the minimum amount, and the first line route will be oral potassium, an oral supplement. But if we can't do that, or the hypokalemia is very severe, then we want to think about IV potassium supplementation. Whenever we're supplementing potassium, there are some cautions to take into account. Firstly, we never want to give any more than 20 millimoles of potassium per hour, and we never want to give potassium more concentrated via IV routes than 40 millimoles per litre, as this can cause a big hit of potassium to arrive at the heart and can cause cardiac arrhythmias due to the opposite effect, due to cardiac hyperkalemia. And the other thing to think about is in patients with renal impairment. These patients have a poor ability to clear potassium, therefore if we give too much too quickly, it can very rapidly lead to hyperkalemia, which brings its own set of problems. Thank you for watching this video. Before you go, I want to highlight two more resources which are really useful for all medical students. The first of these is my physical examinations for OSCE ebook. This is the combination of all of my experience of six years of medical school in Cambridge, and it provides clear and concise examination checklists for all of the most common examinations you'll encounter in OSCEs and also in clinical practice. You can access this book by scanning the QR code or going to claimmedicalconsulting.com. It's available for a half price compared to the paper copy at £9.99 and you can pay in any currency at checkout. The second of these resources is the AI powered question banks by medibuddy.co.uk. These AI question banks are specifically designed for the UK MLA and PLAB exams. The PLAB exam is the international exam that all international medical graduates hoping to practice in the UK will take and the UK MLA is the standardised UK medical final that all UK medical students will take from 2025 onwards. The PLAB will become the UK MLA from 2024 onwards, and MediBuddy are the only online provider who have specifically written 4,000 questions which target the MLA contact map specifically so that you cover everything you need to and don't waste time covering anything unnecessary. I've negotiated a 10% discount for everyone who uses the code BC10 on those UK MLA and PLAB question banks. Thank you. Thank you again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment and subscribe to see more from me. Thank you.